Hello everybody, Jochen Haydn here. I'm back with the December 20th combat resolution and intel analysis. I'm hoping for a really good turn here because we had a what ended up being a pretty decent turn last time. I thought it was going to be bad, but in hindsight, after looking at all the data, it looked good. So I don't see why we can't recreate yesterday's success today. The only concerns we have really right now are the carrier sitting off of Surabaya and out there in between Port Moresby and Australia, but I don't think he's going to do that much with them. He's probably running out of sorties. I think we're going to be fine. Let's see how this goes. Okay, we're off to the races here. So he captures another base in the Philippines, Lubang, due to proximity. All right, so it looks like our S-36 is being engaged by a torpedo boat south of Takao. And we shake that off with no damage. Oh, near miss there. Oh, never mind. That wasn't a near miss. That was a direct hit. Uh, okay, so that ship is finished. So this is out there near the Society Islands, north of Tahiti. Um, I'm not quite sure what that ship was doing, but I am concerned that it was one of my redeployment ships. So we may need to adjust our convoy routing. And that's a goner for sure. Yeah, darn. And we're back in Hawaii. Hmm, okay. So our Pompano, which is now on patrol south of Truck, engaged a light cargo ship going back into Truck and missed. Okay. Swing and a miss for the I-15. All right, four torpedoes wasted there. Excellent. No night attacks. All right, so now he's landing troops at uh, Menakwari. It's undefended. Well, pretty quiet so far. Let's hope it stays this way. Okay, back in uh, Hawaii, dealing with more subs. Pushed in real close to Pearl. Oh. Uh, these are, these are uh, aircraft being spotted by his carrier aircraft. Ah, uh, we were a lot of our ships were spotted by his. Now it's our turn to spot his. Well, looks like he might be targeting Balak Poppin now. Uh, that might be a task force that moved away from. Okay, here come the airstrikes. Got some nails hitting that unit near Kuala Lumpur. Big strikes, multiple strikes here. He's sending a large force at this. We take minimal casualties though between the heavy cloud and the actual terrain. We don't take much damage there. Okay, here comes the raid. This is what I was worried about. And now he's striking the uh, runway. 
Well, he finally got wise to us, guys. He's finally doing the airstrikes on the on the facilities, which is going to slow down our. It's definitely going to slow us down building fortifications. Apparently, we have no flak there at all. So he does a lot of hits at the air base and the runway, which is really going to hamper things for us now. All right, sweeping over Singapore, but we've got nothing left there to attack. Nuisance raid in China. Another nuisance raid in China. And a third. And he is striking Kuala Lumpur again. And again. Ah, he really wants Kuala Lumpur, doesn't he? Now he is throwing a lot of air power into Kuala Lumpur. Another raid in China. This all he's doing is knocking this out of move out of move mode. Oh no. Alright, this is a large raid hitting hitting Townsville. I was worried about this. These all these task forces are completely unprotected. So we lose the Hugh Scott and the Coolidge, which were busy unloading, and there was nothing I could do to avoid it. They had to unload. So I'm sure they're unloaded, but those ships are now gone. All right, now he's hitting Cooktown. Same situation. I was unloading ships there. there was, it was unavoidable. So we managed to take out one Kate, but we lose the Taruna and the Chamon. And some casualties that due to residual units still on board. Uh, very, very tragic. But I, I was just kind of stuck. He, he pushed up so close so quickly that there was nothing I could do to prevent this. Dang. Very sad day. Uh, now we have to we have to endure another set of strikes. Mm, we lose one of our Hudson scouting aircraft due due um, due to his cap. No, more raids in China. This one with a very strong escort of zeros. That's a lot of zeros to send with a bunch of Sonyas. But we're not going to bother trying to even challenge that right now. Taking some casualties here. Nothing major. Sally raid on this Lucy War area unit that's just in the process of retreating out of the area. I've written that off for dead anyway. Yeah, we're, it won't be, that unit won't be alive for long at this rate. Okay, a similar raid. Minor casualties there. Oh, man. It's another raid coming in for ships unloading. The Coolidge still appears to be up right now, but it won't be for long. Not taking those kind of hits. Yeah, Coolidge is done for. Yeah, I don't want to watch it. That ship is going to sink right now. You ready? Listen for it. It didn't sink. Huh. Well, it's going to sink. It can't take that many bomb hits and stay afloat. Oh, 
Oh. Interestingly enough, he did not... He did not hit a... Oh, there it is. Well, uh, that's a big loss. That's going to be a lot of points. Those are big ships that we lost over there. Yep, there's the Robin again over there at Palmyra. Wheeling and dealing with the I-175. These two have been going at it for a week straight, dueling with this. Um, at some point, this I-175 has got to be out of torpedoes. He's fired at least 12, if not more, at this poor Robin so far. Oh, and he's coming up short to Loggy. Okay. Given that that was undefended. Okay, now he's also coming ashore at Shortland Islands. Uh, he's trying to secure some footholds for his scouting aircraft there. I'm surprised he did not attack us at Balak Papin. But I am a little bit happy about that. All right. This unit was previously damaged on the road, and it's just in retreat. I wouldn't be surprised if it, oh, I, I thought it would be completely destroyed, but this unit I've written off for, for dead because it's so depleted and already been attacked. And Winshaw finally falling, but we gave that up. We knew that was going to happen. Oh, okay. It's a shock attack across the river here. It looks like he's starting his encirclement procedure here. And we completely give up and don't even put up a fight whatsoever and allow him to cross the river unmolested. Well... Okay, I was wrong. I thought we'd have a good turn. This was not a good turn. Not at all. And until we find a way to address that situation with the Kido Butai sitting there off of the coast of Australia, he has full um, ability to go up and down the coast and raid us, and we can't do anything about it because we have no aircraft that can defend. Nothing that it's worth defending. Unless you want to throw a bunch of weirways at it, which are just going to get eaten alive by his cap. So definitely a difficult turn for us. So we'll have to take a look at the intelligence report here and see exactly. Oh. Multan. Oh, I need to address that. A lot of units coming in right now. These are units that I was moving around uh, last turn. Hmm. Well, we'll need to take a look at the intelligence report here and see exactly how bad the losses were. All right, guys, we're back with the intelligence report. Let's take a look, see how bad the last turn was. Okay, so let's start with aircraft losses. We actually had a better day than he did again. So it looks like last turn he lost two Jake scout planes to the ops losses. A Lily, a Sally, a Val, and a Kate shot down due to flak. In return, we lose a Hudson and a DC-2. These are operating out of Lado in India, moving supplies into China. So two aircraft to his six. No pilots killed, only one wounded. So that's great. So we should be able to recover that individual. All right. So unfortunately for the Allied Army losses, we took a lot of casualties last turn. He defeated a Chinese unit um, across the river. Uh, we also lost a couple bases last turn. So... Losses continue to mount on the uh, army points. For ships sunk, it was, again, not a very good round for us. So last turn, we lost four troop transports, two of which were pretty high points. These were lost at, at Townsville. We lost an, two other APs at Cooktown. And then we had this uh, AK Veto, 
sunk way out near Tahiti. Um, that ship was probably on its way back in to L.A. from Australia. So he is now interdicting our return route. So we need to do some convoy rerouting in that area since I know he's got subs here already. Yeah, but uh, these losses at Cookdown and Townsville were unfortunately expected because these ships were unloading troops and I had no way of disbanding them into the port. So we lost two here and two here, and I kind of thought it might happen, and it did. He continues to push this unit closer and closer into the area here. And unfortunately, as always, we have no answer for it. We have nothing that can hurt him. We have no aircraft to cover. And even if we did, I don't think we could stop the full might of all of these aircraft here. So we're in a pre precarious predicament here in Australia. He's going to keep running down the coast and just interdicting our convoys as he goes. And it's just terrible. I sure wish I had something that I could send at him to stop him, but I just don't. Elsewhere on the map, he landed at Tulagi and Shortland Islands. I am particularly concerned about the Tulagi because he's going to be able to set up scouting assets here and get coverage all throughout this area here. And again, I have nothing that I can challenge at this time to keep him from taking Tulagi. So we need to keep a close eye on this base because it's the southernmost base that he has at this point or will have. And it's like a dagger, just like Guadalcanal was, pointing right at the heart of our supply lines. All right, so let's take a look at China. We took a big loss here, but that wasn't unexpected. This unit that was damaged was previously moving out of here. We're just kind of trapped right here behind this line of units. There's nowhere for us to go. He did a lot of nuisance bombing in this area. Didn't do much damage. And he also crossed the river here south of Chengchow. The unit that was here completely collapsed and retreated. So now we may want to consider actually holding this grid here so he can't get into our supply lines. So we'll keep an eye on this situation here. Otherwise, everything's going as planned. As far as the Dutch East Indies, he continues to land at these bases here. He'll have this all North Borneo will be rolled up pretty soon. Also, his carrier task force from last turn has moved off of Surabaya and is now, from what we can tell, moving in this direction. Or he's just posturing for an attack on Balik Papin, which would be bad as well. So I have some decisions to make as how to how to deal with this unit. Additionally, we had this little fragment pop up out of nowhere. I'm not quite sure what its intended role is, but it's moving northwest, which is this direction. Not quite sure what he's trying to do. We'll watch that as well. I'm not overly concerned about this unit. We don't really have any task forces at sea that can really hurt, that he can really hurt, so he may not be able to do much with this. What I'm hoping is he continues to just retreat that way to rearm and refuel and all that stuff because I, I, I need a break from this guy. I'm hoping if these two units depart the area, we can open the floodgates in Surabaya and Balak Papin and retreat some ships out of there before it's too late. I now have very good scouting assets in the whole area here. So I have a good idea of where his units are at now. For example, I got this unit in sight. We have coverage that can keep sight of anything down here all the way to Darwin. We have units at Kandari that can spot pretty far around. Belak Pop and Terracan. And Kagai and all have pretty decent scouting assets. So we're going to be able to keep track of all of his units coming into the area now and have more time to react that I did not have before. You can see here he's moving towards Johor and also this way. And he's reinforced Malacca. So he's really tightening the noose on Singapore. And I'm expecting Johor to fall within a turn or two. And then we'll be down in Singapore waiting for our ultimate death. It won't take long for Singapore to fall. Meanwhile, in uh, Burma, thumbs up. Everything's good. 
Uh, let's see if there's anything else I missed on the intelligence report. It does not appear that we've sunk any more of his ships. We can take a look at what we got coming in. So, aircraft reinforcements. We again have the hurricanes coming in in a day. Some 047 recon planes coming in in a day. A C-47 unit coming in at Brisbane tomorrow, which will be good. And then a bunch of bombers in Mojave. And again, in Brisbane, in five days, we will have a little bit of offensive firepower, finally, with these Banshees. Although, sending them in unescorted would probably be a terrible idea. So, I'll keep them in reserve, probably, until I have some fighters to escort them with. For ships, we looked at that yesterday. There was nothing really substantial coming in. So, and it's ground reinforcements. Nothing that we can really use except for some units at Sydney. And then also here in Victoria. Oh, nope, that's in, that's in Canada. I can't use that. So really, we only got a couple units coming in Australia that I can get into play pretty quick. The rest of the stuff's going to have to be transported out, if it can even be transported at all. Yeah, well, that's the situation. So I got this area to worry about and this area to worry about. The following turns will be very crucial in us determining what's going to happen next. So, stay tuned. Let's see what Lodric does to us next turn. Hopefully, I can evacuate some ships out of the area here, but it's hard to say how far he's going to move south. He may be able to keep pace with some of these units. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, hopefully, we get a break from Lodric soon because we really need it. I'm tired of getting beat up. All right. Good night.